So I've been asked to do a video on how to troll Jehovah's Witnesses who come knocking on your door. I figured it was past time for me to talk about that. So let's get into it. I found this extremely informative wiki how on how to stop Jehovah's Witnesses from coming to your door. So let's go over it. Before I get started on this, I want to tell a little story about something that happened to me when I went in service one time. That's what they call it, by the way, going in service. So Jehovah's Witnesses congregations are split up into sections. In my old congregation, we had somewhere around 100 people, and that congregation was split up further into book study groups. I understand they don't do book study groups anymore, but back when I was going, around 2007 or so, once a week, we would have an hour-long meeting at the book study conductor's house, and we would socialize and eat cheese platters and sh**. When the world came to an end, we were supposed to meet at his house. So we were supposed to get close to the people in our group. Basically, they were sleeper cells. Anyways, the congregations are grouped into circuits, which include, like, five congregations. I'm guessing on that number based on past experience. I tried to find it, but the answer wasn't forthcoming, so I'm flying blind on that. Anyways, the circuit overseers visit the congregations in their circuit and give a public talk, check on how things are going, appoint elders, that kind of thing. Deal with big problems. Like, if the congregation had some special need, like a bunch of members are watching movies rated R, or they're all reading romance novels, or something like that, the circuit overseer will pay special attention to that subject. Or if an elder needs to be deleted, they'll advise the congregation and the body of elders. That's what it's called when an elder's title is removed, by the way, being deleted. All this information is from 2007, so bear with me if things have changed. But this is what it was like 10 years ago. Then, above circuit overseer is the district overseer, and that guy is usually over a tri-state area, depending on how big the tri state is. He meets with circuit overseers and talks to them about big picture stuff that needs to be tended to. He also helps organize yearly conventions and stuff like that. The society, which is the insider term for the leadership of Jehovah's Witnesses, would issue the circuit and district overseers Buicks to drive. I don't know why they chose that model of car, but they all had them. And one person in the Kingdom Hall would be honored to have the circuit overseer stay at their house for the week while they were in town. Any expenses the circuit overseer accrued would basically be voted on by the male baptized brothers whether or not the congregation was willing to cover them on Wednesday nights. Like I said, I don't know if it still works that way, but that's how it worked when I was in it. Anyways, back to the story. So when I was like 10, the circuit overseer was visiting my congregation, and I had the privilege of going in service with him. So we're driving around in this van with a little group of Jehovah's Witnesses working a territory, and we stop at this house. And the circuit overseer asked if I wanted to go to the door with him. I gleefully said yes, of course. So we get out and walk up to the door and knock. And the next thing we know, we hear a garage door opening and the sound of dogs barking. Keep in mind, this circuit overseer is like 65 years old, and I'm 10. There were no fences or signs of any kind. So he and I looked at each other and start walking back toward the van. And we see two dogs coming around the corner at us. We made it back to the car, but that got me thinking. What kind of f***ing monster would release dogs on a 10-year-old kid and an old man? Seriously. Why the f*** would somebody do that? That is some f***ed up shit. I was just a kid. You could have opened the f door and said, get off my property. That's simple. Anyways, that's why I never condone people f***ing with Jehovah's Witnesses. Because I was a Jehovah's Witness once, and I remember what it was like to be f***ed with. I wasn't stupid, and I wasn't hopeless. And I didn't deserve to be treated like sh it just took time for me to realize how bullshit the whole thing was. So here's how you deal with Jehovah's Witnesses who come knocking on your door. It's really simple. They have something called the Do Not Call list. Just tell them to put you on the Do Not Call list. They have these little map to the territories and they'll mark your house on the maps so and nobody goes there. They'll come back every few years to see if you still live there, and if they do, just tell them again. It's not that big of a deal. You don't have to release dogs on them, and they won't come to your house. Everybody's happy. Now that we all know how to deal with Jehovah's Witnesses, let's see what WikiHow has to say about it. Step 1. Answer the door. This may seem counterintuitive to getting rid of someone, but the fact is that if you don't answer the door, they are likely to mark you as not home and return in the future. If you truly want to be rid of them, you'll need to answer the door and let them know. That's true, they'll mark you as not home and come back. You're gonna have to answer. Step 2. Interrupt them. It sounds rude, but it doesn't have to be. They're likely to delve right into their script, and it will only become harder to get a word in. Politely interrupt to take control of the conversation. 
when a Jehovah's Witness starts talking, interrupt with a polite excuse me to get their attention. Try raising your hand and holding it between the two of you at chest level with your palm facing the other person, and begin your interjection with, hold on. If you wait until the Jehovah's Witness asks a question, you can simply reply with, I'd rather not have this conversation. I don't know, I wouldn't personally interrupt them. If you're morbidly afraid of them, then I guess you can. But when I was in it, they had little presentations they'd give. I remember one time we were placing magazines about how polluted the earth is. So what I'd do is I'd make note of the houses with little gardens or landscaping or something, and I'd go to the door and strike up a conversation about their garden. I'd say, hi, my name is, insert super secret telltale name here, and this is my friend, some poor sucker who believes this trash. And I notice that you have a nice garden here. We're going door to door, talking to your neighbors about the earth and how dirty and polluted things look sometimes. We're hoping that one day we can live to see it cleaned up into a paradise earth again, as God originally intended with Adam and Eve. Do you think we'll ever get to see that day? Then you wait for their response. They always have an opening presentation, and then they wait for feedback. So to me, it feels like you could just wait for them to finish their opening presentation, and then tell them you're not interested and ask them to put you on the do not call list. Step 3. Be honest. If you make up a reason for not wanting to talk to them, they may see this as an invitation to come back at another time. This also initiates a conversation. Be honest and direct with your response in order to get your point across and avoid one of their conversation starters. Yeah, if you make up a reason, they'll try to find a way to resolve the problem. Like if you say, I'm really busy right now, they'll say, no problem, we'll come back tomorrow. So just tell them you aren't interested and you want to be placed on the do not call list. Four. Politely decline. Choose very few words to decline their invitation to talk. It's unnecessary to be rude, and arguing will only spur on the conversation. A simple, polite decline will do the trick. That works, although I think that could have been grouped into step two, but whatever. Step five. Close the door. Don't slam it in their face, but understand that they've been trained to keep the conversation going. Once you've declined, close the door gently. This is important because like telemarketers or any solicitor, they're not likely to accept the first no and will do their best to re-engage you. I would say that's sound advice. Just close the door. Don't let them re-engage. Although they probably won't try to re-engage after being asked to put you on the list. I guess it kind of depends on the Jehovah's Witness because some of them are pretty aggressive and others are a little more mild-mannered. They aren't supposed to p people off, but every now and then you get one who doesn't care about the standards. Okay, now there's a part two to the wiki how about ensuring that they don't come back even after asking them to put you on the list. And before starting this part, I have one basic word of advice. A lot of people try putting up no soliciting or no trespassing signs, but in my experience, that doesn't really work. They just completely ignore the no trespassing sign and walk up to your door anyways. And when they see a no soliciting sign, they'll say, Well, the dictionary definition of solicitation is selling something, and we aren't doing that. We're giving it away for free. So it doesn't apply to us. So my word of advice is to get a sign that says something like, Absolutely no Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, or other religious evangelizers allowed under any circumstances. Don't step past the driveway. And if you do by accident, spray the spot you stepped on with Lysol, and don't do it again. And if you do it again by accident, you're going to have to use concrete and driveway cleaner this time. No third chances. But if you do happen to accidentally step on the driveway a third time, I'm gonna make you wax my car this weekend. That's a little bit long, but it'll get the point across. They'll see themselves specifically listed on the sign, and almost certainly won't have the balls to do it anyways. So now that we know how to ensure privacy after telling them to put you on the list, let's see what WikiHow has to say about it. 1. Ask to be removed from their list. Okay, that's not quite right. You want to be added to their list. They don't have a list of every human in the city. They have a territory map and they'll just mark you off the map. You want to be added to the list of people who don't want to be preached at. 2. Build a fence. Well, that's just sound advice anyways. Build a fence. But for reference, they walk through gates anyways, so a fence might not help the situation. I know I never thought twice about walking through a gate. 3. Post a no trespassing sign. Like I said, I kind of ignored those. Be very specific. No Jehovah's Witnesses, no Mormons, no evangelizing preachers of any kind. Then we have a part three to this. How to deal with persistent visitors. Usually if they're persistent, it's because you've shown some sort of interest. So if you've mistakenly given them that impression, start from step one at the top. Tell them to put you on the do not call list and close the door. 
Here's WikiHow's step one for this part. Contact your local Kingdom Hall. You could probably do that. They hate confrontation. If you wanted to get their attention, this is probably the way to do it. But this should basically be a last resort. If there's somebody who absolutely won't stop coming back, you could give it a shot. Two, call the police? Really? No. You don't need to call the police. If they're harassing you and refuse to leave or won't stop coming back, then by all means, call the police. But you don't need to be a dick about this. Just tell them to stop and they will. They have better things to do than to harass people who aren't interested. 3. Follow up in court. Okay, this is ridiculous. Sure, if a Jehovah's Witness is genuinely harassing you and you've filed a restraining order and they violated it anyways or something, go for it. Follow up in court. What the f***? Wiki how. Part 4. Understanding Jehovah's Witnesses. No, you don't need to understand them. Just tell them to put you on the list and close the door. This is a little over the top to me. Who the f*** wrote this? Whatever. Anyways, that's all I've got for you. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Patreon. And join my Discord. I basically live in Discord now. See you guys there, and thanks for watching.